Okay, and welcome to part seven of object-oriented programming. This is going to be your first real program using Eclipse. Let's go ahead and start this and have a little bit of uh, interesting fun. So the first thing you need to do is open up PyDev. You already have Eclipse open. You're going to go to the top right hand corner. Look for that magnifying glass right next to it. There's a little spreadsheet with a little yellow plus sign. When you click on it, you should say open perspective and select the one that looks like a blue and a gold snake sort of wrapped around each other. It's called PyDev. After you do that, depending on your operating system, it may ask you to pick a Python version and a program. Just go ahead and do that. It's going to search for libraries and whatnot. It may ask you to create a workspace. If you haven't done that, you need to create a workspace. This is where you're going to keep all your files. Do not use a USB stick for a workspace. It is much, much, much too slow. So don't do that. Okay. Once you finish doing that and you open up the PyDev environment, it should look something like what you see on my screen there. It should have a project explorer, an outline, a console, and a big old gray empty space. That's where the software, your code, is going to go. Now go to File, New, Project in the menu up top. Select the wizard should pop up. Then go ahead and select PyDev, PyDev Project. Give your project a name. OOP class sounds nice. Click along and just let it do its thing. When you're finished, you should have something that looks like the bottom left of my screen here. And it'll have a little blue folder that says OOP class. And it'll have a Python interpreter listed there. Now you need to create a package and a module. So those are all different uh, levels of hierarchy. So the project is called OOP space class. Now right click on top of the OOP space class project in the project explorer. That's going to be that blue folder. Right click, select new PyDev package, give the package a name. OOP underscore class sounds nice. It cannot have any spaces in it. Now once OOP underscore class package is created, right click on that sucker, select new PyDev module, give that module a name. Physics underscore stuff sounds nice to me. You should have a screen that comes up that says template. Under template, select module colon main. And your screen should end up looking something like what you see on the bottom right hand corner there. That is your code space. So now it's time to make our first class. Now this class is going to have attributes related, oddly enough, to physics. Let's call the class Physics Stuff, because we're just that creative. We're scientists, so you're going to assume the metric system. Let's add the gravitational constant at sea level as a constant, which is a tuple with units, something like what you see there. Now let's create a method to calculate terminal velocity of a falling object. Well, since I don't know that formula by by heart. I went to NASA's website and it says that the formula is what you see in red there on your screen. So the info for terminal velocity is that you need the weight of the object, you need the drag coefficient, you need the frontal, the frontal area exposed to the air, and you need the density of the air that the object is falling through. Now you're going to say, wait a minute, didn't Galileo prove that all things fall at the same time? And that is negative, negative, Ghost Rider. That only applies in a vacuum when you don't have any drag from the air. 
So, we need to know the density of air. Well, since I spent so much time in the Navy, I can tell you it's 1.225 at standard temperature and pressure, which is good enough for what we're doing. So you need to add another constant, 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. And let's call that constant air underscore rho underscore STP. Yeah, that's a good name. But we still need the drag coefficient, the area, and the weight of the object. In other words, the method needs three parameters, and it looks like I misspelled the. So let's call those parameters object area, object mass, and object CD. Remember, in the metric system, kilograms is a measure of mass, not weight. Here comes our first program. Remember you needed a square root? Well, the moment that you enter SQRT, Eclipse is going to suggest that you import that from the library called Math or other libraries if they're already installed. We also want to round the result to one decimal place. Otherwise, we're going to get some answer that has 15 decimal places and do we really care? We want to include the units Again, we're doing this in the metric system. It's going to be meters per second. If you don't know why, go ahead and contact me and I can explain to you why. We want to include some comments so that one year from now we know what the heck we did today. Then we need to create an instance of the class. Then we need to call the method with some parameters and we want to print the results to screen. Shouldn't take you very long. Maybe, I don't know, maybe an hour, maybe two. Um, after you do this kind of stuff for a while, it'll only take you a few minutes. And the end result should look something like this. Hopefully this all makes sense to you. Notice the indentation. Notice how clean the code is. It doesn't have all those curly braces that you see in Java or C. It doesn't have all the uh, semicolons that you see in a lot of other languages. It doesn't have a lot of that, you know, line after line, initializing empty variables and whatnot. It is a rapid application development language, which is what makes it so incredibly useful. This program if you take away the comments, it's probably something like 11 lines, yet it's got an object class, it has an instance of a class, it has constants, it has a subroutine, it even has two print statements. Notice the colors that Eclipse put on these things. Eclipse will shade different parts of the code in different colors, keywords, uh, words that you have created, like variable names and whatnot. Um, comments go in a different color, and it just makes it easier for you to read this program when you're trying to find bugs or errors or whatever. If you look at the bottom in line 27, we'll explain that stuff about name equals main later. The entire method is only four lines, and really it could be two lines if we really wanted it to be. This method has no error checking. In other words, if the user inputs, instead of a number for mass, he inputs, my name is John, the uh, program will crash, but that's something that we're going to deal with later. Also, if you go to line 12, and you press control 4, Eclipse will create those fancy comments you see on lines 9, 10, and 11. So go ahead and try it on line 16. The answer, by the way, for a 1.5 kilogram object, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters with a drag coefficient of 3.0, it will fall at 28 meters per second. Now, for your next task, Figure out how to create a method that converts meters per second to miles per hour. Okay, until next time, have fun with this, and uh, 
catch me again on the next class. Uh, have a good one.